Everyone, the Bear Chris Feliga here, back with another episode of Bear Bits Podcast. I am your host, the Bear Chris Feliga, along with Jeff Schwartz here in our LA studio. Sammy P and Will Hill will join us shortly to uh, discuss all of the wonderful Super Bowl props that are available in this game. I know this is always the the thing that people get. I think the most excited about when it comes to the Super Bowl are all of the the different ways you can yes. get the game. I, I have a, a book work of uh, props that I went through from uh, my friend John Murray over at the uh, the Super Book uh, and came up with a bunch of them. And, and it's always the the creative ones that I think always kind of uh, attract people. It's the in Super Bowl Sunday you're dealing with the uh, the Phoenix Open where you've got final scores versus receiving yardage and uh, college basketball games versus certain things and uh, NBA scores, triple doubles. It, 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 the creativity is really uh, off the charts. And, and I think, yeah, are these, are these things necessarily uh, beatable and worthy of a, a massive bet? Probably not. But at the same time, I, I think they are, they are fun to wager on. And it certainly creates uh, interest in from one sport that you may not necessarily be interested in uh, or know much about and, and uh, trying to find a connection to the NFL. So props are always fun, whether they're just games and invo- props involving the Super Bowl itself or you're crossing over with, uh, with, uh, with other sports. So uh, it, it attracts a more – it's why the Super Bowl is the Super Bowl because you are attracting yes. a casual audience, an audience that isn't necessarily paying attention to the NFL all year long. So you've got that along now with the new, the, the new fan Taylor Swift dynamic, and, which is bringing another completely different oh, yeah. audience to the NFL, which they are immensely happy about. Oh yeah, I, I also find um, the props on the halftime performance very fun. I love it, and, yeah, and those are those are beatable. And the, the, there are years; <laughs> those are beatable, where you find out the answers beforehand. Those are beatable. Now, there's limits on those wagers for certain reasons, mm-hmm. but you know when they happen to the Super Bowl happened in Los Angeles, I happen to know some people that knew the length of certain things mm-hmm. and the first song was going to come out. But then we had the set, you know the set list happens to get found. Yeah, now and and, but then, then or, but there was a wager. I think it was the the year in Los Angeles where obviously Dr. Dre performed. It was like who's going to say the first word mm-hmm. it ended up being. Snoop, like it was like, uh, right. like, it, like it was a huge upset. So there's fun ways to bet on some of these. I just looked up the Usher ones for halftime show. We talked about the anthem, like they're, they rips through the anthem. So will Justin uh, Timberlake have facial hair or be wearing a hat? You know, things I mean, things like that, which you might be able to find out about. Taylor Swift, red lipstick was only like minus six hundred last I saw. That that feels like just hammer. Just lay the max unit whale play on. Is she is she is she like vindictive and sadistic enough and hardcore to like to basically like know people are betting on this and like wear something completely different? That way people I, lose. I think it's I think it's that would be awesome. I, I think if that's it's the wrong. Case. I think it's wrong to underestimate her. Like she seems like a very savage person. Yes. And I would not I, underestimate. I, I, and I am here for it. I would not underestimate. Now the limits are so low; she can't bet on herself probably right. and make any money. <laughs> but no, why would she need? But to? also, she only wears red lipstick. I don't know, like what I, I. It would be shocking if she didn't. I think. I think the no would be like would a dark maroon that's almost like borderline. I don't know. Brown. Let's ask people that are here. Is that dark maroon count as like? Uh, we're not the Taylor Swift people. Let's bring on the. I, I, I know. I, 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 I know. We, we, we need Lisa Chelsea in for any again. Like, I know. Like, we're, we're, talk, we're there to, to figure us. out to figure out if, we, if, if dark maroon is a uh, count as that. But look. There are so many ways to wager on this, on this, and you can get your spouse involved too. I might ask my wife if she thinks it's worth putting a wager on. I'll tell you what, the, the, the Taylor Swift thing is so interesting to me because in reality, she's shown very little, as we know, right? And but like my daughter, seven and a half man, she loves it. Like she is she is like so much more into football because they show Taylor Swift for 24 seconds during a telecast. And she knows who Travis Kelsey is now. She knows, and she's like actively looking on the screen for when they're going to show her. And it seems so weird to me that people get outraged over that part of it when it's like they just scored a touchdown. Who cares who they show for four seconds? You show him but, and I'm celebrating. Yeah, but it, but, it, but it makes my daughter super happy that they show her. And she so, knows, she probably knows, she knows now who Jason Kelsey is now too, I'm sure. My, um, I don't know if my daughter knows. She knows who Travis is, obviously. Okay. 
my wife knows who Jason Kelsey is. She asked me to take my shirt off in Buffalo. I refused that that uh, yeah, we, that, that request. Yeah, that, um, we, we, we didn't need, we don't need that. <laughs> we don't need that. That, that was, would have been it probably would have taken too long too with all the layers. All the layers, you had on. but yeah. So so much to bet on in the Super Bowl besides obviously the stuff we've covered in the Chiefs episode, the Niners episode, and we get a gambling group chat now with uh, with Sammy and Will, Chris and myself, where we cover everything else. Every wage you could ever want is is, is in the gambling group chat. Here it is. Everybody's podcast is back. Gambling group chat. Sammy P. Will. Uh, Jeff talking about just overall game props. It could be, be involving cross-board props, individual team plots, play, player props, whatever happens to come to mind. So uh, everybody loves their props, all the sports books everywhere, whether you have one of your apps, whether you got Superbook, whatever else out in, in, in Las Vegas or wherever you are, everybody loves the props. So Jeff? I'm gonna, uh, you, have a, you have a prop for the people? Don't you have a list? I saw on your computer earlier, you were looking at Taylor Swift props. Don't you have like 12 of them? Or you well, that, 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 that's the thing. I mean, I, I have to credit Chelsea, Lisa, and Fran, who were in our big Bear Bets gambling group chat at work. They, they, they helped produce the show and make it as popular as can be. They, 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 had, they had me turned on to this 13 thing because apparently 13 is Taylor Swift's favorite number. Apparently, the, she, the said, she said it is. And, and I was just told that she won her 13th Emmy last night by Fran. Grammy, I, close. And, you were and close. Grammy, so close Emmy, there. Emmy, Grammy, they, they both end in Y. It, it's an award, they end in Y. <laughs> same, same. So 13, she should have 13 Emmys, damn it. But anyway, if we play the 49ers, 4 plus 9 is 13, it's well, 58. 5 plus 8 is 13. It's her 13th game that she's playing. So so how do you how do you how do you make this into how do you make this into wagers though? That's the point of our, how do we it, wager? It, it, this? It, it, why play the game? It, it, it's, the game's played on two eleven, two eleven two plus eleven is thirteen. Like it, it means the Chiefs are going to win. So how do we make money on this though? You just bet the Chiefs money line. Don't, already, don't, already don't even don't even handicap the game. It's just the, like 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 Sammy. This is something you're you're all you're 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 a big numerology narrative guy like this, right? I mean, why why even handicap the game, right? We get the Chiefs. Mahomes ten one and one as an underdog. Now he's an underdog for the thirteenth time. How about that? Wow. I mean, I mean, Sammy, this is too good to be true. So I did notice that one American sports book has a tab on the app called For the Swifties. And either songs or lyrics all have bets. Deja Vu, 15, How You Get the Girl, Karma, which is, by the way, Travis Kelsey, no catches, Niners win 30 to 1. That probably doesn't happen, but people will bet it. <laughs> and then uh, let's see, Red, Chiefs score 22 points in the first half, 10 to 1. Shake it off. Niners score first, Chiefs win, 350. <laughs> they are just literally trying to get new business to sign up and bet on Taylor Swift songs. Well, it's what a country we live in. Well, they're, they're, they're going to need some new business to bet some of those props after uh, reports about a, uh, a very significant golf bet was made at Pebble this past week. And so look, I'm looking forward to monitoring that story throughout the week. I, 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 like, I like when we, the books get. We talked earlier about, about Juice Tech having a big game, guys. They have a... a Taylor's Taylor husband to score a touchdown plus nine hundred. Juice to score a touchdown plus nine hundred. I like. Did he score a touchdown in the uh, the Super Bowl a couple of years ago against the Chiefs? Right. I believe he did. Yeah. So good, yeah. Because I, I I actually I, I liked his props in that game. Man, why not? Plus nine hundred is not bad for him to score a touchdown. Not, not at all. Especially since we talked about how Sammy mentioned all the targets he gets against Kansas City. I, 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 yeah, I, he had. Let's see. I got the targets up here. He had four against the Chiefs in twenty eighteen. Caught a touchdown, 38 yards. Three targets against the Chiefs in the Super Bowl in 20, 39 yards, caught a touchdown. Yep. And then in the last game on October 23rd, 2022, four targets, three catches, 34 yards, no touchdowns. But he does have a touchdown in two of the last three games against the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. There you go. I found one I liked. I found a Taylor Swift prop I liked. There you go. Perfect. It, 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 all, it, all, it all comes back to, to, to Taylor <laughs> Swift. But we were talking earlier in the, uh, I think it was Will in the 49ers episode, you had said how you liked uh, the Brock Purdy, the throw pick. Maybe it was you, Jeff. I can't yes. remember who it was. Yeah. I actually was kind of being a little contrarian here. With, with the, uh, you could bet like the, the first turnover of the game will be an interception or a fumble. I thought fumble at plus 135 might be worth a, uh, a bet because Mahomes has what, like no – he hasn't thrown a pick in a playoff game since that debacle against the Bengals in, in the uh, AFC yeah. Championship game where it was just a complete 
meltdown. Like, he doesn't typically throw picks in the playoffs. So, odds of him throwing an interception probably slim. Yeah, Purdy could throw one, but but I think you got a good chance of maybe a, a strip sack or, or maybe a, a wide receiver gets a ball knocked out. Like, I, I think fumble at plus 135. Again, these are all kind of coin flippy type, throw a dart type props. But but I, I thought there was a little game theory there, Will, and a little strategy with like You could make a good case that there may be a fumble before an interception. Yeah, like you said, it's a coin flip. You're getting plus 130, so I don't mind that. And what I like about this prop, uh, and it's nothing I bet at least yet, but I, I don't like these vague props. This one, there's at least a clear winner and a loser. Some of these props, they get clever, but you have to read the language. There's some room for interpretation. And you don't want to be sitting there you know, arguing. I can remember a year when one of my buddies is arguing with somebody from an offshore book about what color the Gatorade was. Was it blue? Was it purple? You don't want these one where there's there's room for interpretation. So yeah, fumble plus 130 uh, is not a bad one. What did you say, plus 135? Plus 135, yeah. Over over at the uh, not over a, the suit book. Yep. Yeah, not a bad number. Not a bad number. It, it, it's fine. I'm glad you said that because I was having a conversation with someone um, last night, actually, and uh, it was like the, the number of lead changes in, in a game, and they put in the on the prop sheet like lead lead changes defined as a as one lead one team having a lead having a lead, and then the other team like, and I and I, I, I like sent it to him, and I'm like. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm glad we defined that elite. And, and he goes, oh, you'd be surprised. And, and there actually yeah. was someone who was trying to argue them on, like, he didn't know that it meant, like, a change in the score. Like, like I, I kind of thought lead change actually inferred that the score in the game w- was changing. So it, it is amazing what what people will, will argue. Uh, Sammy, uh, one of the Bef- more enjoyable things about Super Bowl Sunday is just like you've, you've got the waste management in Phoenix, you've got NBA games, you've got college basketball games, both men and, and women. There, there's so many different like cross sport props that you can bet. Is there anything out there that kind of caught your eye in terms of like uh, something available like early in the day Sunday that can close it out in the Super Bowl? Well, we talked about the uh, Caitlin Clark prop first half points against Kelsey. First half receiving yards. I do like that plus three and a half on Clark's side. I think honestly, she could score 40 against Nebraska, but there's a couple games in the Big Ten on Super Bowl Sunday. Penn State goes to Northwestern and Minnesota goes to Iowa. I know people aren't going to want to bet that on Super Bowl Sunday, but I can tell you this I've been in the back of sports books for Super Bowls. I've written stories about it for Fox. 95% of the attention in that room is on football and not on college basketball. And there are guys that will literally pick people off. They'll be betting college basketball totals and they'll be betting first halves a lot too, because the numbers like, you know, the numbers aren't always right in college basketball. There's 360 teams. You can't get all the lines, right? You can't get all the totals, right? But I think the books on that day of any day in college basketball are the slowest to react. Cause usually on a random Thursday or a college basketball Saturday, You're monitoring basketball all day. And when the alert comes in that sharp A or sharp B just bet, you know, this rotation number Mm -hmm. for this amount, they're on top of it. But in the Super Bowl, there are $100,000 bets flying in and, you know, five-figure bets left and right and parlays and all this stuff. And there's 500 props. You can beat the books in college basketball on Sunday because they are very slow to move. So I I don't know what these numbers are going to be. I got Iowa, like, Five uh, at home against Minnesota. We'll see how it shakes out. People don't really care right now because we're taping this long before Super Bowl mm-hmm. Sunday. But these other sports and these other markets on day of the game are slow to move because of all the attention that's paid into the Super Bowl markets. Yeah, and I actually liked the other Caitlin Clark prop that day, which was Caitlin Clark three pointers against Nebraska plus a half versus Ke- Travis Kelsey. Uh, receptions in the Super Bowl. You, you you figure she's good for, I would say, at least six three-pointers, maybe seven with, with how many shots she takes, the fact that Nebraska can play defense and, and, and the game goes up and down. Like, there, 
she can't have seven three pointers and and Kelsey can't come in at seven or fewer receptions in the game. So I, I like that the Caitlin Clark plus a half three pointers against Kelsey receptions in the Super Bowl. So uh, I'll, I'll I'll be I'll be rooting forward. I'll be I'll be rooting for Deuce Deuce to uh, go out there knock down as many threes as possible on Sunday afternoon, and then I'll uh, I'll, I'll be rooting for the Niners to shut down Kelsey on uh, on Sunday night. Will. Yeah, and uh, feel free to, you know, if you're listening, just hit me up on Twitter for anyone that's listening along. Find out who I like in college basketball so you can go the other way because the way it's going for me has not been pretty. Um, no, but, but, I, but I will say this, too, and we mentioned this in the other pod. Uh, if you like unders, just wait. You get better numbers late. If you like the overs, go as early as possible because the popular players, the Kelsey's and the Caffrey's, people like to bet overs. They like to root for overs, yards, points. So if you like the unders, wait till five, ten minutes before the game. You get your better numbers, Bear. It's, There's uh, a prop too, Bear, floating around. Uh, Circa has the best price in the world right now. I don't know how you guys feel about this one, if you've even seen it. It's the quarterbacks against the field for the MVP. Hmm. And Circa's got minus 230 right now, which I actually don't think is a bad bet at all, no. considering that like 10 of the last 14 MVPs have been quarterbacks. Now you have your occasional Cooper Cup and your Edelman, and I think, was it Malcolm Smith won yep. one? Yeah, see, I see. But th those are outliers, and I promise you there are going to be people that bet this professionally and, and bet a lot of money that are going to lay. By the time we get to kickoff, that's going to be 250, 260, 270 at Circa. Fandle's already at minus 280, and the comeback is 2-1 to one on the no, which is a different conversation for a different day. <laughs> but I, I don't think I would take the no. I, I would – like if you made me bet that one and said here's 500 bucks – I would, I'd probably lay 230 that a quarterback wins the award. Yeah, I, I would too. And it brings back an interesting conversation. We were talking about MVP prices and what would stop you from laying 230, 250, whatever on the, because the Chiefs win, Mahomes is going to be the MVP. I think if the Niners win, there's a conversation. But if it's not Brock Purdy, it'll probably be McCaffrey, right? So why not? You, you lay the 230 or whatever, and then maybe you just take some take some McCaffrey at plus five to one or whatever he is now, Jeff, right? Yeah, I, I actually think Will's point about Debo winning the MVP is a really good one because if you look at sort of, let's say the Chiefs say, you know what, McCaffrey, you're not beating us this game, right? We're, we're stopping you. Willie Gay's back. The run defense just says, you know what, you're, you're done this game. Brandon Ayuk taken away by Sneed. Some, the Niners are going to move the ball. It's going to be Debo, right? I mean, there, there's a case to make where Debo has two touchdowns and – 150 total yards, and he ends up being the MVP over McCaffrey if the Niners win in that. In that, in that. I, think, I think that's a, a good wager to go. I might, I don't think the Chiefs are, I don't think the Niners are going to win, but I might make that bet because I think it's a good spot to be in if you think the Niners are going to win this game. Well, Willie, well, you would I agree. I think what Barrett's saying, though, is you can lay the 230 for a unit. Right, and, and then take the other one, the plus two, yeah. Well, yeah, and then you could put a half a unit on Debo at 25 to one and a yeah. half a unit on McCaffrey at five to one. and you know, technically, you're you're probably in a good spot. You have Mahomes, you have Purdy, and then you have the two best weapons yeah. on the Niners. I mean, look, if it's Bosa or Chris Jones, you're going to lose <laughs> right. like three, three and a half units. But, it's I mean, the be. math tells us that 70% of the time, it's a quarterback. Yeah. Right. Well, Will, I think we're in agreement that if, if the Chiefs win, it's going to be – like, I guess there's a small window where it could be Kelsey or Pacheco, right. but, like, like, I would say – near certainty you'll be Mahomes, right? I mean, if Damian Williams is going to score three touchdowns like he did four years ago and he's still not going to get the award, it's still going to go to Mahomes in a game where he threw one, maybe two interceptions. It's just hard. I mean, Mahomes is the best player. He's the face of the league. Uh, I mean, you could have a scenario like nothing's impossible, but even the other day or even you know a couple weeks ago when Kelsey had a big game, I think Mahomes would have gotten the AFC title game MVP if they did it for the conference round. So I'm with you. Um, and, and I think – we're past the days where you can bet the quarterback to win the MVP and you're getting value. That the books have caught up. There used to be a time where you get an extra 30, 40 cents on the quarterback. I, I don't know that there's any value on Mahomes, but I agree. If it's the Chiefs, it's Mahomes. If it's the 49ers, uh, it leaves the door open to different guys. There was a year, was it Patriots and Falcons? Yeah, it was. Yep. James White had three touchdowns. 14 Game catches. Yep. Game-winning touchdown. And the yeah. two-point converge. He literally scored 20 points on yeah. his own. And they and still Brady threw a pick Brady. six. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, Brady threw the pick six as well and, and, and still got it. Which, uh, again, 
it, it, it comes down to we're talking about people, human beings, sports writers, and whoever in press box just voting over an award and like when do they hand in their ballot? You know, they, it's so and I like the Aaron Donald year a couple of years ago, like Aaron Donald oh, should have been he MVP won. of that game as yeah. well, and, and and he didn't, and he didn't get it. So it makes it so hard to not bet on on the quarterback. You, you guys know that I'm a big NBA guy, right? Like I'm. In terms of NBA wagering and stuff, like yes. I mean, I'm the only. I mean, I Knicks say, are hot. Sammy, the the Knicks, I know the Knicks are. Hot. You actually, um, you you sent me a note the other day about um the the, the clutch player of the year award with Jalen Brunson in, in finding a little stray line. So I appreciate that. But I there, there's a uh, again this this is at uh, the Superbook SGA his points versus the Kings on Sunday minus twelve and a half. Over MVS receiving yards, like SGA. When I, I, I was looking at the game logs the other night, like there's a really good chance he puts up 40 points on Sunday against Sacramento, who doesn't play much defense. He had 43 the last time that he played. Like, so you're you're, you're looking at SGA points now with uh, with Joel Embiid gone for the, for the rest of the regular season. Now he's potentially going to try and make an MVP push. So you could see him go ballistic on Super Bowl Sunday, put up 40, 45 points, somewhere like that. And then and then you, you're you a winner if MVS scores 30 or, or uh, catches 32 yards or less. So, uh, again, I, I, I'm being sarcastic about me being a big NBA, NBA guy, but I did actually look into this when I was going through the prop sheet last night. Like, do, do you hate that bet, Will? Like, SGA minus 12 and a half over MV. I, I guess it ultimately comes down to – is M- is MVS going to catch a pass, right? That's a good find by you, and I, I want to know what the odds were. I think the Sacramento Kings were plus 750 to get a mention on the Bear Bets podcast, so congratulations. Longer than, longer that, than that, my friend. Longer than that, my friend. Yes. Yes. No, it's a good find. I like that one. Uh, Jeff, don't you like MVS in this game? I do like MVS. Well, so I, I got I got a good number early on for his longest reception. I got it 13 and a half. Uh, it's now, I think, it, Barry, you said 18 or 19 and a half now, which I don't know if I take that. At 13 and a half, obviously, it was much better because all he does is catch long passes if he catches the ball. Now, of course, look, everything I said about Kansas City, this entire five-episode stretch, could all go to shit if no one catches the football. Like, if no one catches the football, <laughs> everything I said matters none. none. She's going to lose. It's going to be bad. They're going to lament the fact that they lost the game because they dropped the football again. And everything I said, but we've seen now for three weeks that they started to catch the football a little bit. I, uh, Bear, I, I follow the NBA a lot in the postseason. Mm-hmm. I like to wager on the NBA in the postseason. I did not know there was an NBA Clutch Player of the Year award. I did not either. And I just looked it up, and... The NBA has too many awards. They have, they have too many awards. They have a hustle award now. It's, it's too much, guys. NBA clutch player. How do you determine who the clutch player of the year is? There, is there we, a, we, we still have not figured that out. But you bet on it. Be you might bet on it. Of course I did. So you don't know, even know the word. Guys, okay. My favorite wager, one of them, Super Bowl, is Gatorade color, all right? So I asked one year uh, the, the trainers who make the Gatorade, right, what is the general philosophy of, of Gatorade color when it comes to Super Bowl? And if you look at if you look at the winners of this and the, the winning color, it tends to sort of depend on which team wins and what color they're wearing, right? If they're wearing a white jersey, they tend to not have colors of Gatorade that would stain the jersey during the game. It tends to not be yellow, red, or orange. Because if you drink red Gatorade, orange Gatorade during a game and it dribbles down, it stains your jersey. So vote on it this way, right? So if you want to, if you think the team in white, the Niners are gonna win. Think purple, think blue, those don't stain. Think clear, obviously, water maybe. The Chiefs, the last time they, they wore red, orange was the color because the orange won't bleed, obviously, into red jerseys. Just have that in mind when you bet Gatorade color the Super Bowl bear. But but but, but could it be red for the uh, Taylor Swift red lipstick? What, what was that, minus 600? She wears red I, lipstick? I <laughs> you, know, you know, we'll lay that down. There is value in Gatorade. I have bet Gatorade over the years based off of what I just said. It's funny. You, may, you may, we were mentioning the props, and you were joking, saying about the Chiefs start dropping the ball again. That was something we talked about in one of the previous pods. I like the, the Niners to have a, a better, a higher time of possession than Kansas, just because you envision that happening yeah. where Chiefs drops, clock stops, and the Niners just kind of control the ball and, and just have the ball for the majority of the game. Sammy, any other uh, – any other game props that you, we may not have discussed in the uh, previous couple episodes that, that are just out there game-related? Yeah, this is a, a neutral bet because it could be either team. DraftKings had first touchdown, rushing, passing, or other. And passing was minus 160. Ooh. 
And I thought, eh, I don't know about that. Because you look at McCaffrey's number to score a touchdown. He's in the minus 250 mm-hmm. to $3 range. We know the Chiefs use Pacheco a lot. You get both quarterbacks, right, Mahomes and Purdy. Maybe it's a handoff to Kelsey or check or whoever. I-, I thought rushing touchdown first at 130 was a decent bet given the math. Um, if it's San Francisco inside the five, it's going to be McCaffrey, 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 likely um, in terms of first, second, third down. So I, I thought minus 160 passing was way too expensive. And then the other was 14 to one, like a fumble or a whatever, whatever the hell else could happen on a football field. Um, plus 130 rushing first touchdown. I, I like the math there. Will, any, any, anything else properly? No, I think I mentioned on one of the previous pods, but you can get the Chiefs minus 155, minus 150 or so, uh, the first quarter plus a half a point. And just so often that first quarter is tied. Maybe you're up 3 nothing, maybe, you know, it's 3 3, 7 7, whatever. There's just a lot of ways to win. Uh, and to reiterate, both teams will defer if they win the toss. Yep. So we don't know who's getting the ball. It's not like the Lions who take the ball, the Packers take the ball. Um, so you know, it's, it's 50 50 who gets the ball first. So uh, plan accordingly. But like that. That key is getting the, the the half a point. It's so easy to just tie when you're getting the half a point in that first quarter. So, um, and, and plus you got Mahomes with the experience factor. Purdy hasn't been in this game. Mahomes has been in this game now four times in five years. He's not going to be tight. He's not going to be nervous. So, I like Kansas City getting the uh, the first quarter plus a half. Are are there any Kittle related props that we might be overly obviously only had what two catches? I think it was against the Lions, and he really wasn't targeted much in that game. Like, 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 is, is there some part of you that says, okay, Kittle did not have a big game. It was not a big part of the They struggled for a good part of the game uh, against the Lions. Like, that maybe he's kind of focused uh, offensively a little bit more, and maybe he see may, – maybe, uh, again, betting these overs is always a dangerous thing, but, but is there something – like, I saw, like, an interesting head-to-head uh, Kittle versus Rasheed Rice in terms of who will score a touchdown first. Like, like, I, I, are there certain props related to Kittle where maybe uh, the, the Niners might target him a little bit more or make, make him more? Like, is there something about the Chiefs defense maybe that might make tight ends have a bigger game? Or am I, I'm, I'm just football. I, I don't think there's anything specific to this game where, tight, where Kittle's going to have a bigger game than not because of where the Chiefs have their safeties or linebackers. I mean, I think Willie Gay's going to play, but, you know, Drew Tranquil played excellent last week. Mm. Like, he was one of the – and that's, you know, the depth thing. The Chiefs have just a lot of depth on their team. They, they may not have the top-end pieces the Niners have, but the depth they have is is uh, is pretty impressive for for where they are right now. I, nothing Kittle, guys, for me. I don't have any any great take on, on what he'll do in this game. Over 20 and a half longest reception for Kittle. He's not going to have, like, a 22, 25-yarder. I think this is a decent matchup for him. Um, you know, the Chiefs might be selling out to stop the run here. I, I could see Kittle having a big play. So over 20 and a half, I, I think, is a decent number for longest catch for Kittle. Yeah, and Kittle's receiving yardage prop is 47 and a half. Kelsey, almost 71 now. So yeah, I, number. I I know that you're paying the Kelsey tax in the Super Bowl where his girlfriend's going to wear high. red lipstick and burn fossil fuel across the continent. Um, 13 times. We understand all that, but like – Travis Kelsey's not 24 yards better than George Kittle. Agreed. That's Probably it. not. It's just matchup wise, and, and you know where the Chiefs want to throw the football. Obviously, getting a couple weeks rest. We saw Kelsey getting the rest and come out against the Dolphins and look much better. And then since sort of the Dolphins game, he's looked a little bit like his age, and now he gets more rest. Right, obviously heading into a Super Bowl. Uh, the one, the one last wager I, I, I looked at, just because I like the name of it, the Octopus Wager. Plus fourteen hundred. Bear, do, do you know what the octopus is? I am. Uh, yes, it, it happened last year with yeah. Jalen Hurts. Do Do we think we have an octopus with like a Travis Kelsey scores a touchdown? Then so the octopus guys is you get eight points, right? So you score a touchdown, then you get the two point conversion as well. Is plus fourteen hundred worth an octopus wager on like a Travis Kelsey getting a touchdown and then converting the two point, or someone on you know Debo or or or, or McCaffrey even being that being that play? Is that, is that worth it? Plus fourteen hundred. I don't. I think those. I don't think that's close to true odds. I, I don't know what you guys think. Yeah, I think I, I did a little digging on this. I, I forget the exact numbers, but it's almost like two percent of the game since the two point conversion has been uh, implemented back in the '90s that this has happened. So two percent of the games, fourteen to one. Uh, you're you're a little light. Some of these, when there's no no on them, you got to be careful. When you can't bet that when there's no two way market, you got to be a little careful on these. <laughs> 
What yeah. about the offensive lineman touchdown, Jeff? Oh, I wish there was a prop on that. I mean, it would be it would be Trent Williams. It would be, I think, the only guy they throw the ball to in this game. Um, I don't think either teams don't really do the the jumbo tight end until the goal line situation. Um, oh, that would be incredible. We need to make a marker for that, someone. Offensive line touchdown. Uh, what would you have to, to put the yes at, you think? Sammy, oh, it probably should be like fifty to one. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> but they never. I mean, they'd never give you fifty to one. They'd they'd whack it in half. And they'd they'd cut it. No, it'd probably be like twenty five to one. <laughs> and they I'm wouldn't sure give you the no there. either. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. There's a market for it. Did you ever get a target, Jeff? Did I ever do? Uh, no, I went. I went out for one one route. In the NFL, I think maybe two. College, you did right. Well, college, I have a three-yard rush. I'm the I'm the uh, third leading rusher for a game we beat USC in. I probably have the most rushing yards for a right tackle in Oregon history. I have to imagine. I have a 16-yard kickoff return in the NFL. 16 yards. Squib kick. Yeah, it just bounced like right to me. It Perfect. hit me in the chest, and I had it was. It's, I have the film of it. It's pretty glorious. I was, I was gonna say I need yeah. to see this. I just high Who knees. What are you playing for? I want to hear about this. So we were playing Tampa Bay. It was the uh, it was 2010. And I think it was the first play of the game. And I got the, – the ball was squibbed. It sort of hit me in the chest. I picked it up. I ran with it. Just terrified. I Just running. I had no idea what I was doing. And then um, – I got I got admonished by John Fox for not holding the ball with two hands as I got hit. Uh, <laughs> as I ran off the sidelines, I was so excited. Um, and then, unfortunately, a player got hurt. A player got got actually carted off the field trying to tackle me, and I did not realize it happened until after the game because I was celebrating so much on the sidelines with the offensive lineman. I did not realize someone got, like, seriously hurt in the scrum mm. trying to tackle me. So um, it was a ugh, 16 yards, man, 2010. Maybe 2009. 2009. 2009. 2009 is when it was. We're gonna we're gonna have to find this now. But I mean, I have it. I have the video of it. I'll send it to you guys. But 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 again, see here 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 we go. Happy celebrating, and a player got hurt, unaware. Yeah, I was unaware. And, and, was totally and today clueless. he's bossing people around, looking totally, for for totally graphics clueless. on the show. Just does the ego on this guy oh, is, this. is, I mean, is incredible. It's just glorious, man. I was I used to be an athlete. I miss those days. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stay here and try and keep Jesse ego in check. I'm gonna let you guys go, Sammy. Will, thanks again. Bear, I love how thoroughly uninterested Sammy is in the Taylor Swift stuff. Like he just <laughs> all year long. He just he's all business. He's all wagering. Oh, he's he's fun, obviously. Dropping those fossil but, fuels across the country. But he just is all he doesn't want to hear anything about Taylor Swift. He's all business, all numbers, all power rankings. Doesn't want to hear anything else besides that. No, it, it, it's it, it, it's beautiful. He, he's so he's so dialed in. But and and and, and what I was talking about before, like I'm looking at NBA players in in, in 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 Iowa women's college basketball, Caitlin Clark stuff like for these cross sport props and stuff. It, I, it's what makes it fun. I gotta say, man, she is fun to watch. Caitlin Clark. Yeah. Oh my, she like she lights up. The ne- I was gonna say, never met a shot she didn't like, and she and she makes, makes all. She of them. makes a lot of them. <laughs> I will watch any sport that's entertaining, man. I don't care what it is, and she's so in, she is super entertaining. It, it's it's kind of like when you're talking about like a, a a television show or a movie, and people are like, "Well, was it good?" I'm like, "Well, what, what does good mean? Does good mean it was entertaining? Does I mean, I mean, if something's like cheesy acting, but it's like so comically bad that it's entertaining, I'll sit down and watch it." And I watched a lot of Sabrina and Eskew at Oregon too, so like. It just feels like it's just like yeah. a continuation of, of that from yep. like two different styles of game, but still it is. like it, it, and this this is even more more points, yeah, yeah. <laughs> more scoring, more threes. Um and along those same lines, you have a, a Caitlin Clark best bet, I believe. I do. And we talked about it in the um in the gambling group chat with, with Sammy when we were talking about the uh, the one that that he liked. And, and I like the one where Kate with Caitlin Clark, three point field goals made plus a half against Travis Kelsey receptions in the game. Uh, and I talk about it, like, playing a team that doesn't play very much defense, and uh, you would assume that she's good for at least six three-pointers, uh, which is not she, – she, she's capable of seven or eight, depending on uh, the, the type of game that she's having. And you know, you know this is a team that's going to take a lot of shots and score a lot of points. So uh, I, I would think if she gets at least six, I, I got a pretty good shot here. I mean, is Travis Kelsey going to have – I know he had the massive game last week, but is he going to is he going to go for seven, eight receptions again? I don't know. So I, I, think, if, I think if she gets six – I, I have a good chance to win. I think if she gets seven, uh, I'm absolutely going to win this bet. So I will be watching Iowa, Nebraska, uh, Sunday afternoon, early on to to see Caitlin Clark go nuts and hopefully not drain a boatload of threes, and then hopefully uh, Travis Kelsey can uh, 
can have an average type playoff game for him. Poor Cleveland State. Caitlin Clark had nine threes against them. <laughs> eight, eight, six, six, seven, eight, seven right now. Yeah. Caitlin Clark, noted Chiefs fan, by the way. Yes, I'm yeah. aware. Yeah. So I, I would, maybe that could be another another good omen if she has a big game. Maybe uh maybe Kelsey will maybe maybe they'll have the same number. Maybe this is a, she'll win the and, and then she it's can like a parlay to have some sort yeah, of it, 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 par, Chiefs win parlay, plus I, like play Iowa. Well, I don't even want to know what the Iowa money line would be against the, <laughs> the, the Nebraska. Yeah, yeah. No, like like a Caitlin Clark over points total yeah. and Chiefs victories. Maybe yeah. put them together. Exactly. Um, all right, my best bet is more boring. Sorry, I don't have a, a Taylor it's Swift or a, or a Caitlin Clark one. I like Chris Jones over a quarter of a sack. I mentioned it in, in a Chiefs episode. It's plus 130. Uh, three Super Bowls for Chris Jones, zero quarterback hits, zero quarterback pressures. Um, he's uh, due. Zero, zero hits, zero sacks, six quarterback pressures. I think he's just due against his Niners offensive line. I don't – one, uh, I've been better at props the last couple of years. I had a blind spot for props for a while. But I have not gotten into, and mostly because I can't wager on them in my state till right. March 11th. Once March 11th comes, I would imagine I'm more into like the exotic props. But I just can't, I can't wager on the Caitlin Clark no. one until I either get to Vegas on on Thursday, or you have the proxy in Vegas. I I could do the proxy in Vegas, um, but that's for just a couple of wagers a year. I don't, yeah. I don't. I just wait till March 11th. I thought about with when you with when you were talking about your Jones uh, prop sack prop. I, I thought about maybe Carl Aftis over. Sack I think both. I think both of them would make good wagers to wager on um, because they're going to play against Niners right guard and right tackle who are not very yeah, good. That, 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 that's what I was, th- was thinking you would figure. Yeah. Op- opposite Trent Williams would probably be the place to attack. Is there, is there a, uh, a Caitlin Clark watch party in Tricks and Caicos for you Sunday morning? That's a, that, that's a great question. I, wa- I wonder if I'll be able to uh, to get that. You know, I totally forgot about uh, that, that I'm going to be there. And so you just said that. Yeah. But you're right. I, I don't know because international international waters. Like I, I, I get certain web, website. I will be able to block, watch it on my uh, Xfinity app there because it, it'll be outside my home. Yeah. My home range in, in outside the U.S. border. I'm gonna have to see if I can uh, see, I, see, see if I can find that. I'm like the Super Bowl were good. Like I, I watched it once a, 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 on on a. Uh, Internet feed of NBC yeah. and, and it was with the the, the, the Bengals uh, Rams game. I watched the the uh, the Panthers Broncos game there. Okay. I watched I watched that on a, on a US uh, feed, but so I'll, the Super Bowl won't be an issue. But a lot of times when like Australian Open was tough for me one year oh, to watch. I lots of prayers. I, I couldn't I couldn't get it. Um, some of these other college basketball games might Every, be. Might everyone be. feels so sorry for you. So sad you're in Turks and Caicos and can't watch college basketball. I want your wife to film you walking into a sports bar there if they have them, and asking to put on the Iowa, Nebraska women's college basketball. Oh, game. Uh, my 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 buddy, my buddy and my buddy Eric and I. Well, we would absolutely do that. I, I mean, I'm sure you would. Dan, I just want to see the, re- the reaction on the face. Dan, Dan, Danny Boys is the name of the. Uh, it's spelled B B. Danny Boys is is like the the sports bar there. We we, we I've watched. Uh, NHL get my we, Penguins were having a big game, so my my wife okay. and I would um, watch the uh, Liverpool Real Madrid uh, Champions League there last, which of was course which did. was awful. Um, yeah, did, did, Danny boys might be able to, uh, to to find that for me, and then we'll be at uh, we'll be at Shark Bite uh, for the uh, Super Bowl. They have a nice big uh, uh, squares pool right, right on the water. It's it's perfect. I can't wait. <laughs> Now, 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 now I'm looking. But yeah. I, I have my my end of year trip is in my end of football season trip is in March. I'm excited. You have to take one after the season. Yes, it's, it's just yes, it's a do. lot, especially for our spouses. My wife needs right. a vacation after I Correct. bother her with football all season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you, I'm, I'm, we're gone for yeah. a couple of days throughout the week and focused on that. And now they get they get an opportunity to see. But what I always what I always like laugh at laugh at Molly too. Like you, you, are we trip I mean, like. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna sit on the beach and ignore me and like read a book or put on your headphones. And, oh yeah, and, and and like and like take a nap on the beach and like it's I'll be there, but like you're not like we're not like conversing. So so oh, my wife has given up. Like I the combine I typically tend to go the same weekend every year, and it tends to be the weekend of the combine NFL combine. Mm-hmm. So I will be sitting there like on my iPad watching like the combine while she's at the beach. Like, I don't. I don't like the sun in me. You know, it's like it's not a it's not a fair fight. I don't like it. It is, I, I don't want to be the sun. It's too much. Umbrellas. So, I will. 
dude, I am ginormous. An umbrella, it's okay. an umbrella only covers typically parts of the body. Big, I need big, the whole big beach umbrella. I, I need two beach umbrellas. That's okay. Um, but I, that? I just will just sit and watch. I still watch football at the beach. I just do it while my wife is also at the beach. Well, you know what? What my what my what my <laughs> what, what what my wife will have video of, and she does already, is me sitting at the beach or at the pool um, on my iPad watching horse racing. Like I'll I'll, have, I'll I'll fire up of course I'll do. fire up my app and I'll have the races from Gulfstream or Aqueduct or Oaklawn or Santa Anita on and I'll, as I'll have pick fours and pick fives going for me. See that, that's all part of the plan. It's morning pool handicap on the PP. I don't know the PP's on the iPad. Handicap place wagers. Go upstairs lunch charge iPad. <laughs> at, and then go to go and then go to beach. Be able to have iPad charged and be able to watch the uh, watch the races on the iPad. One of a kind, buddy. You are. Life is good. It is. <sighs> Hopefully, that was uh, an entertaining uh, <laughs> off-season planning for what Jeff and I have in store for each other. Mm. Appreciate Sammy and Will for joining us on the uh, the Gambling Group chat again. I appreciate all of you all year long for taking the time to check us out on all of the various locations you can consume your your podcast and on the YouTube channel as well where I uh, love having the YouTube channel where you can see how much fun we're actually having doing this. So for Sammy, for Will, for Jeff, I'm Bear. Less you bet, the more you look when you win. <laughs>